In this section, we will introduce Benford's Law, which describes a surprising and fascinating fact about the distribution of the first digits of numbers. We will explain how this law has become an important tool in detecting fraud. Let's start by taking a newspaper at a random page and write down the first or leftmost digit, which is either 1, 2, 3, until 9. What are the expected frequencies of these digits? If all digits are equally likely, then we expect to observe each digit as the first digit in approximately 1 out of 9 or 11% of the cases. Benford's law, however, predicts a different distribution for the first digit of a number. According to Benford's law, the probability that the first digit equals 1 is about 30%, while it's only 4.6% for digit 9. This surprising phenomenon was first discovered by astronomist Newcomb in 1881 and later rediscovered by Benford in 1938. Boat noted that in a book of logarithms the first pages with low first digits are more frequently used than the last pages with digits 7, 8 and 9 since they were more dirty. In that time logarithm tables were frequently used to speed up the multiplication of two numbers. Benford analyzed the distribution of the first digits in 20 tables concerning populations, molecular weights, mathematical sequences and debt rates. In total, he observed 20,229 numbers by hand. He found the leading digit, d equals 1 to 9, occurs with a probability, logarithm base 10, of 1 plus 1 divided by d. The anti-fraud rationale behind the use of the law is that producing empirical distributions of digits that conform to the law is difficult for non-experts. Fraudsters may thus be biased towards simpler and more intuitive distributions such as the uniform. Strong deviations from the expected frequencies might indicate that the data is suspicious, possibly manipulated and thus fraudulent. Hence. Benford's law can be used as a screening tool for fraud detection. If Benford's law is not satisfied, then it is probable that the involved data was manipulated and further investigation is required. Conversely, if a data set complies with Benford's law, it can still be fraudulent. Data sets satisfying one of the following conditions typically conform to Benford's law. Data where numbers represent sizes of facts or events, data in which numbers have no relationship to each other, data sets that grow exponentially or arise from multiplicative fluctuations, mixtures of different data sets, and finally, some well-known infinite integer sequences. Typically, the more orders of magnitude that the data covers, at least four digits, and the more observations we have, typically 1,000 or more, the more likely the data set will satisfy Benford's law. We have already seen that many real data sets conform to Benford's law. Most financial and accounting numbers generally conform to Benford's law. Fraudsters typically change the data set by adding invented numbers or changing real observations which do not follow Benford's law. Due to these abnormal duplications and atypical numbers, the dataset is not conformed to Benford's law anymore. Hence, Benford's law is a popular tool for fraud detection, since it identifies deviations that need further review. It is even legally admissible as evidence in the US in criminal cases at the federal, state and local levels. Benford's law has been successfully used for claims fraud, check fraud, electricity theft, forensic accounting, and payment fraud. Benford's law was for example used as evidence of voter fraud in the 2009 Iranian election. Mark Negrini showed that Benford's law could be used in forensic accounting and auditing as an indicator of accounting and expenses fraud. 
Not every data set has to conform to Benford's law, and many will never do. Examples are, if there is a lower and or upper bound or data is concentrated in a narrow interval, for example, hourly wage rate or height of people. If numbers are used as identification numbers or labels, such as social security numbers, flight numbers, car license plate numbers and phone numbers. If fluctuations are additive instead of multiplicative, such as heartbeats on a given day. Let's work out an example of using Banford's law for fraud detection. Assume the internal audit department of a company needs to check employee reimbursements for fraud. Employees may reimburse business meals and travel expenses after mailing scanned images of receipts. Assume we want to analyze the amounts that were reimbursed to employee Tom in the last five years. Here you can see the distribution of the reimbursements depicted by the light blue histogram. The red line corresponds to Benford's law. It is clear that the data set has less ones and more sevens than expected under Benford's law. Based on this discrepancy, the company can then further investigate Tom's expenses. After analyzing his reimbursements starting with seven, it was detected that Tom replaced one-third of his expenses starting with a one by a seven before scanning the receipt. Banford's law has also been extended to the first two digits. A data set satisfies Banford's law for the first two digits if the probability that the first two digits big D1, big D2 equals small d1, small d2 belonging to the interval 10, 11 until 99 is approximately as follows probability big D1 big D2 equals small d1 small d2 equals the logarithm with base 10 of 1 plus 1 divided by small d1 times small d1. This test is considered more reliable than the first digits test and is more frequently used in fraud detection. Here you can see an example of this. This data contains the populations of 19,509 towns and cities of the US. You can see that the distribution of the first two digits nicely corresponds to Benford's law. We can then create predictive features based on Benford's law. More specifically, we can featureize the discrepancy between the empirical distribution and Benford's law using a statistical distance measure, such as the kullback leibler divergence or, Kol or kolmohorov smirnov statistic. These can then be added to the fraud dataset for predictive modeling.